Good day everyone. Welcome to another Science 10 Lectures by Mom Sheila. For today, we will be discussing on the distribution of active volcanoes, major mountain belts, and earthquake epicenters. We will be focusing on learning tasks 7 and 8 of your week 3 of your weekly home learning plan. For the past few days, we have this data of the latest earthquakes that we have experienced in our country. And from the data, we can see here that just the recent earthquake took place last October 17th at around 4.06 a.m. with a magnitude of 5.4, wherein the epicenter is located 70 kilometers from Puerto Galera, Oriental Mindoro. And below in the figure, we can see some other strong earthquakes that are actually happening in our country every now and then. Now, why is this so? This is but logical because the Philippines is located and what we call the Pacific Ring of Fire. As you can see, Philippines here are mostly, or most, uh, or majority of the area of the Philippines is actually uh, situated in this area, in this part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Now, aside from our country being uh, visited or we experience a lot of earthquakes every now and then we also have a lot of active volcanoes now, some of which we have the following Mount Mayon with its perfect cone shape this is a famous tourist spot we also have Mount Pinatubo with this beautiful scenery of its crater our very own Taal Volcano, which has erupted last January of this year. And this one is also a um, beautiful top view of Mount Smith. So these active volcanoes and uh, so many more are actually distributed in our country. Now, aside from these active volcanoes, we also have several mountain ranges in our country. We have this uh, found in northeastern coast of Luzon. We have the Sierra Madre mountain range, which is home to many endemic species of flora and fauna. Now the question is, have you ever wondered why our country is endowed with this count? kind of geologic features. We have earthquakes every now and then. We have several active volcanoes and of course a lot of mountain ranges. We would like to answer the question, what is the relationship between occurrence of earthquakes and the presence of volcanoes and mountain ranges in a particular place? With that, we would proceed with our topic on plate tectonics. So, for, for plate tectonics, now we say that the Earth's lithosphere is consists of two layers, the crust and the upper part of the mantle. But for our purpose, we will be focusing on the outermost layer, which is called the crust, as you can see here in the figure. So lithosphere is the layer of the earth extending from the surface, from the outer surface, to a depth of around 80 to 120 miles. The crust is made of a variety of solid rocks like sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. It has an average density of 28.3 gram per cubic centimeter and its thickness ranges from 5 to 50 kilometers. 
the crust is thickest in the part where a relatively young mountain is present and thinnest along the ocean floor. In this figure, we can see that this thick part is the continental crust and this thin area is the oceanic crust. And this is actually the upper layer of the mantle. So this layer of the earth is what we call the lithosphere. The continental crust, as you can see here, is thicker, but although it is thicker, it is of lesser density. That's why it, it floats on top. And the oceanic crust is relatively thinner, but denser than the continental crust. That's why it sinks. So we can see that the continental crust are actually floating on top of the oceanic crust. According to the plate tectonic model, the entire lithosphere of the Earth is broken into numerous segments called plates. So if we could look at the map of these plate boundaries, we can see here a lot of plate boundaries. So for example, we have here this South American plate is actually consists of this oceanic plate and the continental plate. Where else we have here the Eurasian plate is also consists of this continental continental uh, crust and the this part is the oceanic crust. So we can see here several other plate with their boundaries. Okay, moving on. For your task for this week, our objective is for you to describe the distribution of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts. You are asked to Use the world map provided in your module and for you to locate and list down the location of active volcanoes, earthquake zones, and mountain ranges in the world. This is a much more clearer and colored version of the figure in your module. As you can see here, the ones that are colored in yellow are the ones that are actually the young we, where we can find the young fold mountains in this area this yellow ones and the one the areas with this red dots are actually the location of the major volcanoes around the world so we can see here in this area and then the area with this horizontal lines with this are actually called the earthquake zones. When we say earthquake zones, there are actually frequent earthquakes in this area happening every now and then. So we would be wondering why are these areas highlighted in this map or why would young fold mountains and uh, earthquake zones and major volcanoes are situated in this area. If we could notice that young fold mountains are here along the edges of the continents or some are found here at the middle of the, the continents. The same with the major volcanoes. Major volcanoes would also be found some of them would be found at the edges of the continent, some would be at the middle of the ocean, and some other are found at the middle of the continents. The same thing for the earthquake zones. So the earthquake zones are actually located somewhere here, the northern 
uh, part of the Northern America. We have here uh, also some of which are found in South America, Northeast Asia, of course Southeast Asia where, where this is actually part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. So from this we can actually notice the relationship between the location or distribution of the active volcanoes, the mountain ranges or the young fold mountains, and the earthquake zones in the world. So if we could zoom in into this map again, so you can see here the young fold mountains, the red dots would signify the major volcanoes and the earthquake zones. Now your task for your guide question is for you to actually to identify the just you could just identify the continents or the ocean where we can uh, find this uh, areas so you don't need to specifically identify the countries you can just you can just cite the the continents where we can find this uh, mountains major vol volcanoes and earthquake zones so this would be the questions that you will be answering on your learning task number seven so based from my discussion you can actually um, locate the areas where we can find the volcanoes earthquake epicenters and mountain ranges of course I can assure you that you can answer question number two as well okay and the same thing for question number three now, for learning task number 8, you are to complete the concept map provided in your module. So as you can see here, we have the Philippines. And you are asked to list down the areas in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao where we can actually uh, experience a lot of earthquakes. So you, you call them earthquake areas or earthquake prone areas. The same thing, you're also to list down the areas in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao where we can find active volcanoes. And lastly, you are also to look for the areas or location in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao where we can find different mountain ranges. Okay, so I hope that you understand now why we are discussing this um, distribution of uh, earthquake zones, mountain ranges, and active volcanoes. Again, we have to uh, remember this key concept that plates are large pieces of the upper few kilometers of Earth. We call that area lithosphere. And that the, these plates are moving as a single unit as it, as it floats above the mantle. So just very similar to rafts that we can see in Matabongkai floating on the ocean. So that is a very uh, simple analogy of this plates floating above the mantle. That's why in this figure, in this last figure, we can see here that several, several arrows are moving in different direction, meaning that these plates are actually they can be moving towards each other they can be moving away from each other or they can just be grinding past each other which would be the focus of our next lesson for next week thank you guys for listening to this lecture and I hope that you learned something and you will be able to answer the questions in your learning task 7 and 8